Hello and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Uh, today I want to take a deeper look at hips and specifically the muscles inside the pelvis um, that tend to get blocked up and, and uh, what people feel is tension in the hips generally and when that's a kind of block feeling, you know, your hips are heavy or tight or stiff, it's usually because it's the inside muscles that are <clears throat> holding on for whatever reason. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I've come up with something. I had a deep experience over the last couple of days, and, and that's when I do my yoga solutions, is when I discover some, a new layer of clarity or something, a new trick that I can share that will help you. Um, <clears throat> which is uh, why I haven't done one for a while, because I've kind of reached a plateau where I kind of found an answer that was useful for pretty much everything um, for quite a, quite a while. Uh, usually, usually I get something brand new every week, but um haven't done for a while. And so anyway, I'm back uh, with some new stuff about the hips. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, right, so... Uh, if, let's see, the, the problem with uh, hips is the problem that you can find with any part of you that is sore or stiff or whatever. It's being given the job of carrying weight uh, as, you get a, as you go about your daily life. Carrying weight and sort of holding you in space. And my, my baseline idea for <clears throat> what it is that we're looking for from our yoga practice is the ability to let go, to let go of our weight together with feeling appropriately supported. And um, <clears throat> for, you know, unless you're perfectly structurally balanced and your breath is in agreement with that balance, you, you won't have that experience. And that could be a rare thing unless you're crashing out on the sofa or something, you know? So, <clears throat> yeah, the carrying of weight. And hips are no different. And uh, so most people think of hips as the stuff on the surface, the um, hip flexors, the groins, and some people think of the hips as the stuff at the back, the tension they feel around the base of the spine and top of the buttocks. Um, <clears throat> that's the outside of the pelvis and the outside of the hips, if you like. But the, the area I'm talking about is much deeper, uh, the psoas muscle. The psoas muscle, the strap between your lumbar spine and the thigh bones that goes through the pelvis. And inside the pelvis itself, the iliopsoas, the, the muscles that lay against the, the, the inside of the bowl and do a similar job to the psoas muscle, but it's, uh, they join in at the actual pelvis, whereas the the psoas muscle bypasses the pelvis and goes straight through to the thigh bone. There's a little bit of anatomy. Um, so when, yeah, to reiterate, the problem with hips is that we use them to lift weight. So, you know, if you, if you were to put your hands over the general area, maybe the edge of your hands into the groins and your fingers into the soft stuff, in the front of the pelvis, if you pick up your legs, you'll probably feel your back bracing behind you, you'll feel a pinch, and you'll feel the groins uh, jumping as they join in. And also, if you're, if you're sensitive to what's going on underneath your hands, you'll feel a kind of push forwards in the lower belly. And that's in response to the instruction to pick up the weight of your leg, which involves the legs being heavy and you picking them up, right? It's, it's what happens. It's not the end of the world. It's, it's just uh, the way it is. But um, it's that tension, like that push forwards in the belly, is um, a sort of a bearing down action from your diaphragm. You know, you find yourself maybe even holding the breath to do it a little. Um, the groins lifting is you levering the weight of your legs up with, uh, with the hip flexors. And the back 
pinching, if anyone feels that, is you, the effort at the front is kind of fixing the spine, and then the spine has to catch, lift the weight from the back. You have to bring the weight into the pelvis in some fashion. And the easiest way of doing that is by using your lower back to push into the ground with your, with your pelvis. See? So, um, but all I've done so far is describe why <laughs> you might get tight and tense in the hips when you do something as simple as lifting your legs. So here's a, here's a trick, here's a solution that will give you an entirely different experience. So how, however you bring the legs up, it doesn't matter for now. Um, I, I've got ways that you can do that without causing the worst problems, but uh, um, you'll find plenty of videos ar around that. Um, but if you want to bring the knees up in some fashion, uh, ideally you've got trousers, so you, you've got something to grip. And I want you to grip hold of the inside left trouser leg with your right arm and your inside right trouser leg with your right arm, right hand. And then the job is to um, try not to pull with the elbows, that, that, that'll, that'll not do anything useful. You want to hang the weight of the legs away from you. And you're hanging from your own support. And the crisscross nature means that the legs won't fall out. The, um, and the towards you pull isn't really for, from the elbows. It's from the hands and wrists holding the trousers. And then the shoulders rolling back into the ground. Now, if that's awkward, it's because you, you're, you've made yourself overly stretched at the back. So you could walk your hips and shoulders together behind you, which will make you arch a little. But just so you're, you're more together, and then relaxing your shoulders back. Um, oh yeah, another habit that um, most people who practice yoga seem to do is to tuck their chins in when, when they do that sort of thing. So do the opposite. Open up your throat, open up your face, sort of look upwards away from the action a little bit so that your throat can be open and your chest can relax away from that. This is all to make you comfortable. And you need to be comfortable so that you can um, relax the weight of the legs away from you and let go of any, any, any holding you can notice in, around the hips and groins and inside the lower belly. And if you're together enough at the back, the, um, there will be a little lift of the spine. There's nothing wrong with that. What's, what's um, not good is when you have to carry your weight when you do that. So the, the, arm, the hands holding onto the trouser leg and your shoulders hanging back means that the spine can be arched without doing any lifting. So you can arch and relax. Um, just to make it soothing and to get you to settle into the ground underneath the pelvis. The legs want to be as heavy as they like away from you. And the fingers strong enough so that the, so you, you don't lose, lose support. And the, just a little roll of the shoulder so you're not pulled into a funny shape by the weight of the leg. If will roll back away from the shoulders. And if you just gently milk from side to side, the job is to try and kind of relax into the ground so that you're, you can really, 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 truly let go of tension on the inside of the hips and inside of the pelvis. Now that release of tension in here means that you, you can now reorganize this fluid space. Now, now, there are muscles engaging and it's to do with the release of the breath. There are muscles engaging deep in the lower belly to help drop deeper towards where you touch the ground in the pelvis. So take a breath and let it go. When you let the breath go, see if you can sense a sinking in the lower belly towards, not towards your back, towards where the pelvis touches the ground, the near of the sit bone in. Um, if that sinking happens without you having to um, do anything much, it's because you're finding support from the ground. When you breathe, 
you kind of want to breathe by dropping your weight in a similar fashion so you don't push the belly forwards because that's the thing that's going to sort of pull on your back now if that's difficult um it's because you haven't got a naturally um responsive lower core so you can inv invite it to develop by first of all tightening the pelvic floor just to get something in the lower belly contracting and then when the lower belly is contracted try and relax the pelvic floor so you can breathe and you'll be doing something that feels like a, a smile inside the pelvis and that smile will be an opening of the chest it will be an opening of the of the upper body so allow that to happen so the deeper you go in the lower belly the longer the front of the spine can be and meantime make sure that the legs are doing nothing to hold themselves it's all from supportive arms so we're trying to encourage the lower belly to move back it follows the breath so if you can you know if you tilt to one side you might feel the muscles get involved with supporting you by not by holding you together but by working as if pressing into the ground on that side as you breathe and it will feel like you're breathing into the ground as your legs relax away from you and then when you release that breath you might feel a, a kind of a natural deepening that happens when you because you let go. Okay, and we try the other side. The reason for doing it on one side is just so you have some sort of uh, physical sensation that you can recognize. You're relaxing the legs away from you completely. If there's any holding, you'll miss the trick. But you're trying to get some deep activity going on in, inside the lower belly to find the ground on the side you're leaning to as you breathe. The pelvic floor will be relaxed, but the lower belly will be anchored back and wide, like you're smiling in there, as you breathe. And the breath will come up into your chest and heart as you use the ground to support you as you breathe. And then the release of the breath is just a release. Okay, so it should be nice and deep in the pelvis now. Now the next job is to bring that space you've created in here up. And you do that with your upper belly and your rib cage. The upper belly sucks up and it goes with your face being up in space. It goes with the, the way the arms are supporting the legs. So it's basically a, a, a nice sort of deep inhale. And then when you release the breath, I want you to keep sucking up in the belly and then use your rib cage to pick up your weight. Leave your head dangling back so you don't cheat by hurting and hurt your neck. So that'll make the rib cage do the exhale. When you've done that, kind of keep a sense of that of the rib cage um, anchoring you to the hips so that you as you roll back you lead with the back of the head and then when you get there you can relax the neck long long again i don't mean tuck your chin in so that would have caused the the pressure in the lower half to be released um, you created space back inside the pelvis with no tension in, around the joints themselves or even inside the pelvis it's it's kind of at the center you've drawn that fluid space up and that's your ribs and diaphragm doing that well your ribs really and when you release the breath and the ribs anchor down over that and then you've got you to pick up your your face um to make sure that the ribs do something they, they kind of want to pull into the hips the ribs at the side bring the pelvis closer but the ribs at the front moving away from the face press into the ground underneath the pelvis. Okay. And when you've got that, you've created a lot of vertical space in the lower half, and you've brought the opening to the spine behind the heart. Now that, so, so there should be no real weight in the leg. 
because um, you're not you're no longer bearing down against them, and the pelvis should be hollow. And what you've got your it's your central support. It's the the in and up feeling that goes with the wrapping round and down, otherwise known as Uddiyana Bandha. But it's not a thing you're doing to your body, it's a central support thing. And if you have that going on, and it relates, the action of doing it is the thing you're using to meet the ground underneath the hair and pelvis, then you can do that as you breathe. And that central support will stay with you. You're not using your groins or your lower back to carry the weight of the leg as you breathe. You'll be strong in the middle. And when you release the breath, you can let go of the diaphragm. So it's a, just a release of the breath, just release of tension. And you'll find that this stuff around the middle works instead of the diaphragm. The diaphragm can relax, so you get an upward movement that gives you a weight to the ground and the upper body. And the ribs going down with the core coming up gives you the ground away from the upper body. Uh, gives you the gives you support from the ground uh, in the lower half, and it's move, it's a movement away from the upper body that gives you space for your neck, for your throat, for your shoulders, and if you try rolling from side to side now, keep activating that inwards and upwards feeling together with the grounding feeling from above. Using the ground underneath you for purchase rather than hanging your weight off your back. The hips should be relatively free. Um, and when you're not jabbing up the hips, you know, you get you get a lot more range of movement. You've got that feeling of the legs falling away from you, whilst you empty up away from it, and then the ribs coming together gives you the space for a lot more range of movement. You're not jamming up the area with tension and pressure uh, bearing down on the organs. Okay, so um, for my um, premium members, I'll, I'll carry on and take you into some standing postures. But uh, that gives you the idea. And um, if you understand that you're, you're finding um, a breathing relationship to the ground from much deeper to allow the, the stuff that's nearer the surface to let go. Um, but inside of the pelvis, you have the, you, you don't want the psoas all the iliopsoas bracing, that's the feeling of tension in the hips that leads to lower back problems. That wants to be free of the job of carrying your weight. Those muscles are more to do with the breath than anything else. Okay? Um, yeah, that'll do. So, um, yeah, if you, if you want to um, become a, a, a member, you can, you can um, sign up for Silver Membership to get access to all of the full versions of my yoga solutions where I take you into a deep half hour to one hour class, depending on what the subject is. Um, you can do that on my website. Uh, there's all the membership options there. Just go to the members page and it will pop up on the side. Um, and, you, and also on that page, you'll see the um, what I have on offer. I've got all sorts of things. Anyway, I, I won't bore you with that now. Uh, you can find out for yourself if you're actually interested. Okay, uh, much love to you, and I shall see you soon. All the best now. Bye-bye. <laughs>